Making a life-altering four-year commitment is a very difficult decision, and yet a majority of Americans graduate high school at 17 and 18 years old and immediately attend college after. When I was deciding which college to attend, I had offers from some of the most prestigious universities in the world, including Harvard and Princeton. I even had a full academic and research scholarship to attend Columbia. I ultimately chose MIT, and do I regret making that decision? Hi everyone, it's KJ back with another episode of my 5 Minute Friday series. In today's video, I'll dive deeper into 5 reasons why I chose MIT over other Ivy League school options. Stay tuned to find out whether or not I still agree with my reasonings to this day. When I was deciding which college to attend, the opportunity for hands-on engineering projects was a major factor. In just my two visits during high school, I noticed very quickly that at MIT, the students had practical smarts in their field due to hands-on experiences they were already getting as students in their classrooms. I personally learn a lot quicker by doing, so this was a major turnoff for me when I visited other schools and saw that their curriculums were focused on theory alone. Looking back, the hands-on experience might have actually been beyond my expectations. During my time at MIT, I coded a robot arm to do automated tasks and an autonomous car that can avoid obstacles. I built a water-propelled rocket and a foam airplane that were optimized for distance and payload, respectively. Even in my business and economics classes, we role-played or acted out scenarios or got to ask questions to industry leaders. Everything involved around not just the theory, but applying them to real-life systems. At MIT, there are no class ranks or valedictorians. If you finish, that's it. You're just one of the graduates of MIT. I didn't want an environment that pinned me against other students. When I visited Harvard and Princeton and Columbia, I did get the vibes that people were trying to do better than others. I do want to be clear, I didn't want a competitive environment because I had already dealt with that in high school. I ended up getting into the universities I did do in part to that competitive environment, but I just didn't want that type of environment for my next stage of schooling. I can definitely understand if there are viewers who feel more motivated by a competitive environment, and that's understandable too. In hindsight, the lack of competitive environment did shine through though. There were many instances where people would take time out of their busy days to help me out in something that I was struggling with. This created as healthy a culture as possible for the extreme level of difficulty that everything was. At some of the other schools I had visited while deciding, I noticed that there were a lot of legacy students, meaning they were part of a lineage of family members who attended the school. I also noticed a lot of students who would wear outfits that I knew costed thousands of dollars. I personally had and still don't have anything against high-income families providing their kids with what they think are the best of everything. I would honestly do the same. But it was much more motivating for me to see people across the spectrum of family income at MIT. To me, I viewed the difficulty level at MIT as the ultimate leveler that dissuaded someone from ultimately going just for the name. In hindsight, of course there were still high income individuals who attended, but it was just nice to see a seemingly more uniform distribution across the student body. On LinkedIn the other day, Sal Khan, the founder of Khan Academy, shared a study that corroborated what I noticed during my time at MIT. There were not significantly more people at any income level who attended MIT, which can't be said for schools like Stanford or Yale. I wanted to pursue a field that would allow me to work on autonomous systems post-graduation. I thought that I wanted to do work in either autonomous robots, cars, or drones. At MIT, they had a department that focused on just this. And I thought that the knowledge of physical systems that I'd gained by studying aerospace would be valuable moving forward. And compared to the degrees that I could get at any other university, the Bachelors of Science in Aerospace Engineering was the one that most aligned with my interests at the time. In hindsight, this may have been where I would have gone differently. Not with my school choice, but with my degree choice. I'm proud of where I am today and I'm grateful for the path that I took to get here, but I would have probably majored straight computer science if I were to do it all again. My last reason spoke more volumes of my headspace at the time than any of the attributes of the universities I visited. I believed that studying aerospace engineering at MIT would be the most challenging path forward out of the different options I had. I wanted to prove to anybody who doubted me along the way that I could succeed taking what I thought was the hardest major at the most challenging university in the world. My high school had people from 7th grade to 12th grade, and I still remember 7th graders looking at me and whispering their theories in the hallways about how they thought the only reason I got into the schools I did was either basketball or being black where those two reasons were the only two possible for me. That I couldn't have possibly earned the spots through merit. In hindsight, this was a major motivator that contributed to me getting great grades and securing paid internship opportunities every single summer. But it was not healthy for me to continue to live in this mindset. That's why as I entered my later years at MIT, I shifted my focus to my loved ones and to inspiring all of you with the advice and stories of my journey. 
I needed my motivation to shift to be more positive in outlook and I knew I shouldn't spend any energy thinking about the thoughts of people who shouldn't have ever mattered to me in the first place. As I mentioned at the start of this video, choosing the right college or university or job is very difficult, especially for a 17 or 18 year old high school student. Looking back, all things considered, I'm very proud and happy to reflect on the reasonings that I had at the time. They were not perfect by any stretch, but they were mature, thoughtful, and really took a holistic view of the situation. Harvard may have had the flashiest name and Columbia may have given me the most money, but MIT was the best choice for me. I've developed into this great problem solver, technical leader, and motivator because of my time at MIT. My really tough days created a resilient yet humble individual. I now feel like no challenge is too big to overcome, but also know that I can't do anything alone. Choosing MIT was the best decision for me. The hands-on experience, lack of competition, neutral playing field, specific degree program, and desire to prove doubters wrong all contributed to my growth and success. While I may have chosen a different major in hindsight, I'm proud of where I am today and the person I have become, so it's hard to have any regrets. I hope my story inspires you to make decisions that align with your values and goals in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.